everybody, it's Tony George along with my good buddy Sean Salisbury, host of the Sean Salisbury Show on iHeartRadio. And of course, find him on Twitter at Sean Unfiltered. And of course, uh, I-, I know you want to talk about your hometown, uh, Houston Ash Astros, and how they're kicking butt right now, Sean. But <laughs> we got to switch gears and uh, we'll get to uh, be sure and tune into our our Major League Baseball pick today, but we have the Phoenix Suns taking on the Los Angeles Clippers. And, Sean, I'm going to pose a question to you. Can Los Angeles win this series without Kawhi Leonard? No, they absolutely can't. Now, I, Paul George stepped his game up in this postseason. I mean, we have yeah. we have been on him, and this is, a, this is the one sport, I mean, if we're talking about the three major sports, the three where the superstar – can take over. But we even saw what happens when Anthony Davis isn't with LeBron James, right? So when the other team can match you star for star, it becomes a problem. And Kawhi Leonard, obviously, first team, all NBA, is a special player. You know what he brings postseason wise. And we were waiting for Paul George to step up. And in the previous series against Utah, he did. But the question is, if if with Chris Paul, you know, out, which will probably be a lot less time now, maybe by game three, possibly, depending on the protocol, and with the Kawhi Leonard out, they say, okay, supporting cast, the Suns are a better team, period. Now, with Kawhi Leonard, the great equalizer, but Chris Paul, the best off-season acquisition in the entire NBA for his impact of what he brought. So now you say with both of those out, whether it's now or, you know, three, four, if, if, if it continued like this, you ask the simple question, who's the better player right now? Paul George or Devin Booker? And in game one, Paul uh, Devin Booker stepped his game up. He knocked down shots. He elevated his game like Paul George did with Kawhi Leonard. Now, do I believe that the Clippers are going to hang around and make it interesting? You bet I do, because I think they've got enough veteran leadership, and Paul George is a good player. But to extend this throughout, especially when Chris Paul comes back, they, they, they just, they're just down a man. And when you lose – I always love when people say, oh, they lost one of the best players, but they'll survive it because their supporting cast is good. The other guys are important, uh, Tony, but I got news for you. When you lose one of the best players on the planet, it diminishes your team, and you can live by it for a second. I don't know if you can live by it for a minute. And so, no, without Kawhi Leonard, depending on how long, if he's out the whole series, the Phoenix Suns will be moving on to the Western Conference Finals. If he's back, it'll be a great series. I expect Paul George to keep him close. I don't expect Paul George to get him over the top, although he deserves credit for elevating his game when Kawhi Leonard was out. Well, this line opened up at six, and this morning it's down to four and a half. So you've got love for the Clippers coming in. And you could look at that first game and go, well, anytime you have a team in the playoffs coming off a seven-game series and got to turn around and go on the road and play, you know, 48 hours later – they're at a serious disadvantage, and that's why they got beat up in game one. You can say that about the Vegas Golden Knights, you know, uh, you know, game one when they played the Avalanche, you know, after coming off the seven-game series against the uh, Minnesota, you know, in hockey. It was a throwaway game, they call it, you know, for lack of a better term. But I think there's more to it than that. Um I've beaten up on Teron Lou a little bit this season. You and I have talked about it, uh, my distaste for him, but he did a nice job against Utah. I'll give him that. I tip my hat to him. Uh, Doc Rivers does what Doc Rivers does in the playoffs. He loses late, just like he did with Philadelphia. We won't get into that. But um, at the end of the day, um, I think what L.A. biggest problem is, Sean, is not only did they get rid of their coach last year, uh, they got rid of a lot of depth, you know, Hattrell, you know, Williams, those guys really carried them. They were a deep team, and now they're playing a deep team. You know, that's one thing about Phoenix. They've got four or five guys on the bench that can come in, and, you know, it, with the exception of Booker and Paul, there's not a lot of drop-off across the board, right. and especially with L.A. playing small ball right now. And yeah. bear in mind that Kawhi Leonard was also their best defender. And he's not in the game. So it really mixes up their moxie and their chemistry here. Uh, But you've got a lot of people coming back. I did not like L.A. at – I did not like Phoenix at six, but I'm starting to like him at four and a half here. Um, You've – 
you've gotten a lot of chatter out there, and I know you probably talk about this on your radio show. Phoenix, Phoenix is just getting lucky to be in here. You know, they got to play the Lakers without the full complement of Davis and James, and James wasn't even 100%. And now they get to play the Clippers, and they don't have their best player. They're just going to be able to find their way into the Western Conference, you know, finals here and, and uh, you know, get to the finals based on their playing teams with one arm tied behind their back. Sean, you and I have said this all year long, and I'm not going to comment on the total in this game because I have a seven-unit top pick on this totals play tonight. But I will talk about the side play. I think Phoenix is one of the top two teams in the NBA. I do. I, I They're right where sure. they need to be, Sean. And laying four and a half to me, at least on the surface, maybe the first half line at three even, I bet them both ways. Sir. I think they're vastly better than the Los yeah. Angeles Clippers. <clears throat> yeah, I do too. At six, I would have taken, and my thought process going into this all morning long was, at six points, I'm taking the Clippers to bounce back. Uh, they fought, and now I'll give them credit. In that game, late in the game, in Phoenix in game one, <clears throat> on Father's Day, they had themselves a, a pretty healthy lead, you know, what, around double digits, 10, 8, 10 points. Yeah. And the Clippers fought back to make this a tie and force them, the, the Suns, to kick back into their mode in the last two, three minutes to make it happen. Uh, listen, it is, it is complete. BS is the word I'm, I mean, I, there, I got a lot of other words for it. The acronym <laughs> I'll use is BS to say over the course of a hundred uh, of, of a, a 72 game schedule, all the postseason. there's been times when they've had some guys banged up this year and, and had to play without Chris Paul a few times and listen over the, the attrition, everything that goes on for anybody to suggest that the Phoenix Suns are just a yawner to get to this point is that they should be embarrassing themselves and they lose instant credibility. Uh, that four, with that with that spread going down, yeah, I'm starting to say, well, the Suns got a chance to get up 2-0 and you might want to extend that lead in case Superman comes back and gets healthy with the Clippers immediately because they love being down 2-0. Matter of fact, they, admi- they, they doesn't matter. Dallas down 2-0, Utah down 2-0. And what do they do? Boom, come back and win the series. So for, for the Clippers, it'll be like, oh, we're down 2-0. Who the hell cares? We're, we're good with this. But uh, Kawhi was on the court with them. So uh, at least before he got hurt in the Utah series and Paul George took over for uh, the entire Dallas series and, and part of the Utah series. So I, I'm with you on this, but it, it is an absolute – it's a – you lose credibility comment if you all of a sudden tell me that the Suns are fake. They're not. And we're about to find out. And then they'll find out when it comes to the finals if they're able to get there. Four and a half is different than six. I'm with you on that, Tony. Hard for me to go away with the Suns at home without Kawhi Leonard. I know Chris Paul's not there, but six, I would have taken the Clippers like that and wanted to. Now it's a different ball game, and I, and I, I like the Suns at home, but they better not get comfortable with a 2-0 lead when that happens tonight. Yeah, you've got the team with the best player on the floor at home in the postseason. I mean, that's always worth a couple of points right there. You ain't lying. We're down to we're down to four and a half. Um, I like the first half line here, minus two and a half, just in case for some reason Clippers make a run late. But if you take a look at the first half scoring, uh, Phoenix is uh, scoring sixty points a game their last three in the first half, and the Clippers only fifty four, and they're down one of their best scores now. Um, yep. I think that I, I like that number better than the four and a half. If I had a gun to my head for the game, I definitely uh, would uh, take. I would definitely would lay the four and a half. I would have taken six. I, I've said it numerous times on these podcasts that you and I do. When you get into the NBA postseason, you start putting up six or seven points, much like tomorrow night's game. You know, with the Bucks and the Hawks. You're com- oh, no number doubt. one, you're completely disrespecting a team. And number two, it's just, just way too many freaking points. That's like laying, that's like laying tw- like 10 in the NFL, you know, you know, and right. bear in mind, folks, when it comes to sports betting, the best free piece of advice that I can give you, the best free tip you're going to get all day. Always remember, you're not betting into games, you're betting into numbers. That's the difference between a professional better and a recreational better. An you have yep, to realize sure. the numbers that you realize the numbers that you're betting into. Sean likes the four and a half here. Um, 
I tend to agree with him. I think my stronger lean of the two would be uh, the first half line at minus two and a half. By the way, you see the free $60 button there above Sean and I's head. Uh, be sure and get over to the website. We have a 20% off any package for any handicapper over at the website today through midnight. That's 20% off any package, daily, weekly, monthly, in any sport from any handicapper. There's a promo code box. Just type in anything 20, anything 20, and get yourself 20% off. Catch Sean and I with our Major League Baseball video and catch Sean on the best sports talk show in the country on iHeartRadio with the Sean Salisbury Show. Thanks for tuning in, folks.